Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to what is sure to be the single most unbiased, completely factual broadcast in Free Enterprise history, as we have the wonderful, the fantastic, the undefeated NGDA versus, you know, that, that other guy, Poydrick, who I guess is also in the running. But uh, my name is Vitasia, and I'm joined today by Sheep Lawson. Sheep, how how do you think? You know, we're, we're this is going to be clearly an unbiased broadcast, right? You know, I don't know how anybody would tell without uh, us telling them that you and Enja Dave are teammates on the team Bold Strategy. I don't know how <laughs> anybody could possibly figure that out. Uh, and Enja Dave uh, trying to keep the team in it this week, uh, try to improve to four and two, but. Uh, Poydrak's team, Time Zones Are Us, up 1-0 in uh, this series, and Poydrak uh, looking to g clinch the win for Time Zones Are Us. It's going to be a really fun one, Patasia. Absolutely. I I had to have a little bun, bit of fun. I had to get all of that out of my system, um, but absolutely, this is going to be a fantastic race, both Enchidave and Poydrak, well-respected members of the community, of the broadcast team as well, so this is going to be a fantastic race here between the two of them. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, that other team did, did drop, uh, my race earlier this week. Uh, Aerith did defeat me, so, you know, uh... I wasn't gonna know, mention I, that. I, no, I'm, it's, it's <laughs> over a week old, it, it's perfectly fine at this point in time, but yeah. Uh, so they are up 1-0 on us on this week, so, uh, we are relying on Ninja Day for the win to keep us alive for the rest of it. Um, and Enja Dave has been having a terrific tournament. Uh, he has not been defeated yet in the uh, in the tournament, so really an instrumental part of, of bold strategy. And uh, up against Poydrak, uh, Poydrak, uh, a well-respected member of the community, has been around a long, long time and knows all the tricks. So it should be uh, it should be a nail biter here. Absolutely worth pointing out. We do have a young start. Um, this is an interesting parallel because Dave did commentary on my race earlier this week and the one that I lost was also a Yang start. Um, and when you have to complete six of seven objectives, remember that objective number four, have Coco forge legend sword with adamant, rewards the hero with a weapon. Um, Yang has two weapons that he could possibly equip, one of which is called the God Hand, which is something like a plus 15 to his agility, uh, which can make agility manipulation for Zeromus a little bit weird, to say the <laughs> least. So um, we'll see how both Engineer and Poydrick, this is this is me learning right now. And we're starting with a Telus start as well. Yeah, and a Sparkle gives us a Zeus Gauntlet. We are underway. We are glad to have you with us. Yong and Tella uh, need a little bit of help. There's going to be a lot of looting, you would think, from both runners, especially given that Telus starts with that exit spell. Absolutely. Uh, Tella does unlock. That's the nice thing about him. That early exit spell, also early blink, um, does give him a fair bit of utility, even right out of the gate. Now, late game, when you're going into Zero Mist, not so much. But for this early part, he's certainly worthwhile. And Dave is immediately going to say, hey, Let's at least figure out what other characters we're looking for loot for. Yeah, and taking a look at these objectives while uh, the looting is happening, uh, the moon is going to be very much required. Uh, Ribbon Room and Crystal Sword Altar uh, are two of the objectives. Remember, our runners have to complete six of the seven, uh, but you got to go up to the moon at some point. Yeah, and uh, more than that, like early Darkness Crystal is going to be really, would be defining for this particular match. Uh, Tella does, you know, we mentioned uh, the abil his ability to unlock, you know, different strats. He also kind of makes early D-Machine grind. Um, if we do get an early Darkness Crystal, he makes that possible as well. So um, both runners now, uh, Dave, after uh, Poydrick immediately goes here into the watery pass and is doing a deep dive, uh, Enja Dave has now joined him. We'll see if Dave also dives deep or if he just exits out pretty early. Um, 
the the watery pass it does have some great loot in it the problem is that you know the back end is pretty well spread out and you can't normally get to it unless uh unless you have access to that early exit which we did the best uh things i've seen in the watery pass so far a uh, mute knife if a edward or somebody comes along uh maybe for that porum in uh in in baron inn and a Stardust item. Uh, now our runners both started with a starting Stardust uh, in, in that uh, starter kit. And uh, so that will be in addition, but that makes uh, Hobbs or Fabul or the Antlion Cave uh, much more manageable with this team. Oh, Dave does pull a cheeky Leviathan out of that pot in Kaipo. In addition to, to seeing our starting weapons, we have a Poison Claw on Young, and he did pick up an Ice Claw as well in the Weapon Shop. Uh, nothing of note. Oh, it does pick up a stack of Ether Ones as well. That might be important, knowing that Artella, you know, his major hang-up really is his MP pool. Otherwise, I mean, his HP pool and being completely unviable for most of the rest of the game, notwithstanding, uh, looks good. Uh, we did also see a cane there in the Kaipo bed, which if we have an early Sand Ruby, he's one of those characters that can get online pretty quickly. Very much so, and, and the Baron shop, uh, I believe Dave poked into, Poidrak hasn't yet. A uh, lot of good stuff in there. Star Veils, uh, Cure Twos, and Soma Drops for sale, all in Baron. And so Poidrak going to manage uh, the inventory that he picked up in the Watery Pass, going to uh, do quite a bit of shopping. Meanwhile, Engine Dave up on Hobbs sees Rosa facing off against the Sparkle. Uh, if he can get through this fight, Rosa will be very welcome. This is an interesting spot for Ogo Pogo. Um, it's not necessarily punchy, um, and percentage-based damages, you know, you open up with double big wave, which generally just wipes out half of your health. But at these lower levels, uh, Tella's Cure 2 will bring us right back to full. So this is actually a fantastic spot to see Okapogo. Yeah, we'll take a little bit of time when Young, base level Young is your main damage dealer. Uh, but using that Stardust that he picked up in the Watery Pass, and has one more to spare there. But yeah, as you said, here the blazes are not all that threatening, uh, and Tella is the dedicated white mage, and that's fine. That feels so weird to say, Tella dedicated white mage, but, um, you know, we're, we're setting ourselves up for uh, some, you know, just saying, hey, this is going to be a fantastic uh, set up to do that D machine grind because we have one white mage, we have a second white mage that we know is going to be there in Forum, uh, in the Baron Inn. Um, and you think about it, you have a bunch of mages and you have yourself someone who just gets lots and lots and lots of HPs that you can put a, a Star Veil up on. That's by definition the exact setup that you kind of want for you know, in the end Z fight and be, to be able to really take advantage of the D-Machine grind. So uh, we're setting ourselves up very nicely for it. And Edge of Dave does get through Hobbs, uh, point track behind him, but uh, are you ready to call it? Are you ready to say this lead by Edge of Dave is going to see him through the rest of the way, Vitasia? Yeah, stop the count. This is it's it's over. It's uh, we're good. Let's call. It. No, it's we got got to finish the race. It's okay. Um, I can feel the threat of the newspaper behind my head, like every word I say. And today, we're going to dive into that antlion cave. A vanilla sand ruby would not be unwelcome here, although we haven't seen. Uh, Super good cane weapon yet. Edge of Dave did pick up an ice brand uh, on the back of Hobbs along with some items to sell. Poidrak, meanwhile, uh, that Ogo Pogo doing a little bit too much uh, to him. He's going to try it again. And the Antlion Cave is the server room. CPU down here. 
uh, still having a little bit of an issue dealing damage. The CPU fight is annoying no matter where it is if you're relying on physical damage because uh, Yong can't quite reach to the back row in order to deal uh, full damage. But that second Stardust uh, will help out a lot. The problem is we gotta try to get... Oh no, we're trying! No! no. And a really tough target on that Globe 199. Well, how about an Orb Grind? Did, are we kicking? <laughs> Did I see Dave kick? <laughs> The remedy here only doing 83 health, but uh, you know it, it's every, every little bit does does help there. Now uh, the power of Yong does get the CPU down, and now only has to deal with the attacker and defender. But uh, Rosa cannot survive another Mazer. Luckily, she doesn't have to face it. Well done. Mini orb grind there, so a little bit more experience than we're used to getting. Um, so two levels each for our lower level characters here. Let's hope that the item was worth it. Man, okay. <laughs> that, that's my favorite non-key item to get. Just <laughs> It seems like a threat from a supervillain. You've defeated me, but here is a coffin for you when we meet next. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Boy Jack gotta... does, does get his Rosa. Yeah, so Poydrick does get through. Dave is now through that antlion fight. Keeps the coffin. I like the being able to keep the coffin. Remember, um, unlike the Potion Party flag sets earlier uh, in this tournament, uh, for those bosses that are not actually bosses, you know, the Dark Imps, the, uh, the Soldiers, of various flavors, uh, that coffin can do a little bit of work for us. So if we find something that uh, we can just throw on that coffin, that could be beneficial for us a little bit later. So um, Poydrick starting his ant line at the same time. Meanwhile, Dave is starting the Fabul defense. I do like this play from Dave going to the Fabul defense. That was a, a bruising ant lion fight. Antlion cave fight and now gets to tangle with the actual antlion. Uh, Fabul, although you don't want to, maybe you want to fade it to try and get, uh, try and get the pan later to single dip. Uh, you know, right now it's a free heal and you need kind of that healing and, and you need the experience that comes from the Fabul defense. Dave showing us that early on he is not afraid to use those J items even though they are you know best used for kind of spread enemies he's used star veils on single target enemies he's used a big bomb on this ant lion uh just showing that you know holding on to those resources is not necessarily a good thing if you're not ever going to use them and when you're light on damage this early part of the game you might as well go out on a limb and, and spend them but what if there? What if this time there's actually a fight after Zeromus that you need your elixirs for? What then? You know, people always talk themselves out that it's it's not going to work for them, but it just might work for me this time. <laughs> I I think Scala has hidden the the key items. Well, I I don't think they're here. Drain Spear hype. Uh, there was a there was a dragoon who came here thousands of years ago who left this behind, but yeah, not what we're looking for. Where are the key items? Yeah, the reason he left it behind is because it's garbage. It's only <laughs> used for growing. <laughs> well, do want to thank our tracker Bangagong and our restreamer Scala Kitty. Uh, Bangagong not having a whole lot to do just yet. But uh, we know, well, we think the key items are going to show up at some point. 
bandanas are available for sale in the defense shop in Troya. That's a nice pickup there. Um, you know, bandanas are just good for any of your physical fighters. Uh, you know, I'm sure Dave would love to see some physical fighters. We haven't seen a whole lot other than Yang up to this point. Uh, even available, I mean, we see a cane at some point, but uh, he's not necessarily been available. No, D yes, yeah, thank you, Dave. Please, I saw Thor rages. You want Thor? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's something that Dave was act Dave actually taught me, you know, watching him do races. Like, if you see Thor rages, like, just buy a stack of 10 whenever you see him. Very much so. They are the one of the most useful uh, offensive J items. Uh, there are lots of bosses who are weak to lightning uh, that the Thor Rages can be used against. And for some bosses like Kainatso, it's just absolutely essential. Boydrag heading over to Fabul, and he will be noble and help them defend the crystal. And today, meanwhile, continuing his world tour. Blizzard Spears for sale, if that cane comes along anytime soon. I also picked up a couple stack of, stacks of charm arrows. That tells me that he's expecting his Rosa to uh, to hit a couple things here in the sea. If, if we happen to stumble upon a heroine robe and a decent bow, so... Nice pickup there. Um, otherwise, I think the next step really is going to be either Ordeals or Baron Inn. Still not done shopping, though. Dave is checking all of these shops for anything useful, um, because otherwise there's just not a whole lot available to us in this scene. Ooh, a cloth cloth. Ooh, Elven Bows for sale and Thunder Claws. And Enja Dave says, yes, please. Yep, that's the second of the elemental claws that we picked up for Yang. Uh, he is called the Punch Mage for a very real reason. Uh, when he casts Punch, it hits very hard normally once you get to the higher levels, but it also uh, does that physical damage with an elemental flavor to it if you have one of the elemental claws to it. Most impactful is really going to be uh, the trap chests that are in the lower tower of Babel. That's you know, normally all of these chests are limited to tier five loot, which, you know, has some limitations associated with it. Not that we need a whole lot of loot right now, but we're we're kind of in a, a weird spot with loot. If we need, if we run into like a Cecil at any point in time, for example, uh, you know, opening up a handful of trap chests, trying to hit the lotto, it's, it, I'd liken it to a scratcher ticket. Sometimes you scratch it off and you get, you know, another coffin. Sometimes you scratch it off and you get a crystal sword, though. Yeah, and, and uh, really the calculus is going to depend how far behind you feel, whether you feel like you need that crystal sword, uh, with how many trap chests you open. And sometimes it'll just be whether the trap chests are available. Uh, for example, the flame dog uh, check. In this tournament, we've seen it pay out a lot of times with a holy sword or with uh, something else really, really nice. Uh, but are you really going to plunge into the depths of the uh, of the tower in order to find it out if it's not in one of those first two checks? That's kind of the, the risk you run. But Enja Dave up on ordeals and finds gold beds. This is an objective. Yeah, it's an objective. Uh, you saw Dave trying to get an arrow off on Tellas. I can't... You're mage type, right? This will hit you for your super effective damage pretty please, but it, it mm, doesn't, no. unfortunately. Nope. It, it, it's like we always say, Tella too swole. Can tank that arrow. That is interesting because uh, E-Ninja does make a, a good point in chat. Uh, Golbez... You know, for, for a logical access underground, how the seed intends you to get under underground, it cannot be blocked by Valvalis or Golbez or there's Wyvern. there's one other white and we had this discussion like the other night. So whatever is behind here on Mount Ordeals, we know it's not our intended way. We're not gonna find I you know, one way or the other, we're not gonna find it here. 
Um, still might find something. Again, we still have to get through this boss anyway, but worth pointing out that we're not gonna find our answer here. Yeah, certainly not the only way underground. It could be a way underground, won't be the only way underground. So the way underground is through Baron Inn. Uh, we've, we've found which, uh, as a reminder, Baron Inn uh, contains two bosses. The first one is Dark Elf, uh, and Dark Elf is guarding a Porum there. And Jadave threw Golbez, and in a rarity, in this flag set, Enja Dave has an objective before he has a key item. You know what? It's a rarity, but we'll take it. Um, <laughs> it, it could happen. It, it's yeah. totally a thing. Um, but yeah, we'll take it. And looks like we have uh, back attack guards. Um, these can be a little bit punchy, although. Uh, we do have that coffin, and Dave has not been shy about using it. Yeah, he's going to turn that one in immediately. As well, Rosa knows mute, uh, which will be helpful if uh, if there is a uh, a chance that the guard could counterattack. So here's the here's the interesting thing that that's lining up right now. Poydrick is doing Baron in first. Now, the only reason to do ordeals is to get your tele powered up and or get your Cecil powered up. I mean, doing boss hunts up there is absolutely a reason because there are three boss checks. But we've seen a lot of runners kind of dodge mount ordeals unless they have an other otherwise have a reason to go up and do it. Um, with Golbez being up there, it'll be interesting to see if how the seed plays out later on in the seed will drive Poydrick away from mount ordeals and then away from that Golbez objective. Dark Knight Cecil in the second spot here hits hard, but goes very slow. So all Poydrak needs is for Yong in the middle to hold out, and Yong will be able to get in turns to uh, use those Cure 2s. Uh, so Poydrak will get through this spot. Does not give experience anyway, so not losing anything from having Tella and Rosa down. Vanilla sword, legend sword on top of Mount Ordeal. So Mount Ordeal's hard required. It is blocking two objectives. Um, another big bomb use there. So Enju Dave with uh, the big brain play on Ordeals. But Twin Harp, oh no! <laughs> what? Twin Harp has our way underground, and it is an objective. A very productive Baron in here. That's really interesting. Twin Harp is one of those locations that, you know, it's still relatively early. We don't have a great source of damage. Um, getting your Tele online isn't necessarily going to help with that damage either because the Twin Harp spot has very high magic defense. So you're kind of relying on physical damage, in this case, on a Yong and maybe a Bode Rosa at this point in time. So right now, um, the way things are lining up, it's kind of coming up in today, but it does look like Poydrick is going over to Mount Ordeals immediately. So just they're just flipping spots. So everything's going to line up again here soon. And Dave does have an advantage in that he did shop in Mysidia and found an elven bow and some charm arrows, at least for Rosa. I don't know if our runners have seen mute arrows. Those would really help uh, as well, but... Yeah, uh, at least Enja Dave has a uh, a better bow. Now, now, if you want to jump on the the bold strategy bandwagon, I I would welcome you onto the bandwagon sheet watch. I'm just saying. I'm hopping on. Oh, you mean the the actual team bold strategy, and not the bold strategy I was thinking of, which is. Uh, immediately start checking D-Mist before you head to Twin Harp, including at Zot 1. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm referencing the team specifically. But, <laughs> yeah. Thanks thanks for the generous interpretation. <laughs> well, Enja Dave will have to uh, face down the Dark Knight in the bar.
And now I'm thinking of uh, Dark Knight giving a speech in the Batman voice. Justice is not the only right in this world. world. Someday. Martha! I'm Dark Knight. Worship me! And now Enja Dave has a, another white mage, and now this party is made up of all white mages all of a sudden. That's not a bad thing. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's perfectly fine to to have all white mages and and only one source of physical damage on your way up to do the only spot that requires nothing but physical damage. We're cool. It's all right. <laughs> Yeah, even a Rydia here would uh, would be helpful. Uh, a a Rydia with a Bahamut, I should say, uh, because even Leviathan at that spot does uh, no damage. Yeah, I mean we do have a Leviathan orb, so that's, that's something to note. But yeah, not this is this is going to be a not fun fight. Um, hmm. I, I kind of either way you paint it, but I do think you're right in that Dave is set up a little bit better because he took some time. We did see Poidrick by the charm arrows, but um, you know, the Elven bow is a superior bow over the archer, so that'll help get through this a little bit quicker. And Enja Dave is going to face the music, knows that uh, barring an unlikely Demas, that the twin harp is the way underground. And Poidrak will uh, be accosted by the guards on the back attack spot. Did get through the uh, Golbez spot, so uh, also has one objective. Now, Poidrak also has that uh, coffin. We'll see if he wants to use it. He's going to mute the guards instead and make their spells much less threatening. Yeah, that'll be interesting if that ends up paying off, if there's like an officer soldier specifically in the Fey March, for example, um, that could pay off in spades by, by hanging on to that coffin. So um, we'll make this fight a little bit longer for Poidrick, but it, you know, that might still pay off a little bit later. Um, that being said, you know, we are, you know, last night we gave a whole spiel, hey, we're, we're going to you know, explain what's coming up. But everyone already knows what's coming up here directly with the Twin Heart. Uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, uh, I I think, uh, you know, all the people are in the know uh, that uh, you have commissioned this seed to play the Victory Fanfare uh, for Bold Strategy for the heart music? We, no, no, I, no, because I dropped the ball. We were not able to do the victory fanfare today because we need NG Dave to tie it up. So it will all be on Nitsi. And I know, Nitsi, I know you're in chat. When's your race? At, it is tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern. Nice, okay. Uh, but otherwise, DJ Spoony B is coming up, so.
So Dave does get through that. I was just talking about Officer Soldier. I summoned it. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, and to the tunes of the crazy motorcycle chase from Final Fantasy VII, that was an excellent rendition as usual. And this party, now battle-hardened by the Officer Soldier fight, now has to go through the hook route. So this is going to be a little bit of an advantage to Poydrick because, you know, going through that hook route, again, not necessarily the easier way into the underworld, but we do know that is our logical way to go that direction. Um, Poydrick is going to be able to use that coffin that he saved on that officer soldier, maybe even get a light glitch on him. Whereas the officer, which holds most of the HP and therefore most of the experience for that fight, uh, that didn't go to Engine Age, so he's going to be at a bit of a loss on XP for a point in time where every bit of experience really helps. Yeah, this is still an underleveled party having to go through that hook route, uh, and in this, at this stage, Matasia, uh before you even angle with that hook route are you uh trying to get exp another way or are you taking trap chess maybe in in castle evelyn i think trap chess in castle evelyn is an absolute must for this party you know you got almost no one i mean porms at level 13 there's no way you cannot count we've seen too many free bosses that are already out there to make a bold gamble and say we're just gonna run run it down there what I do think is going to happen, though, is I think Dave is going to go dive it to get the character and then with our wonderful exit mage that we have back out to get the experience at the Evelyn trap chests. Or he's going to make a fool of me right <laughs> away. Thank, thanks, Dave. I, You know what? This is, this is why he's 4-0 and I'm not. So <laughs> Dave did check the uh, waterfall and found more like a shower -a. So both Leviathan and Ashura off the board in out-of-the-way locations. Another Leviathan orb, that's money. But yeah, uh, you would think that uh, wanting to go into uh, Evelyn Cave first, at least to see if there are hourglasses or other uh, items that would help. pick up a vampire there. Haven't seen those for sale yet, but uh, Poydrak is about to head off on his crazy motorcycle chase. Uh, keep swinging that sword and hope for some red motorcycles. We'll see you on the other side.
and Poitrak is through. And as you said, uh, Batasia, he did use that coffin to get even more EXP, so he'll be a, uh, a little better equipped heading into the trap chest and into the hook route. Yeah, absolutely no surprise there whatsoever. Um, <laughs> poor Porum is just getting knocked over on Dave's <laughs> side every single time. It's just like, no, you're not going to get your experience for him. And it's just being knocked over every single time. I can hear Dave from here yelling. <laughs> it's, it's It happens, Dave. It happens to the very best of us. The game is telling him the game really wants a Porum slingshot. <laughs> Gotta keep her down. But uh, through two trap chest, did get a black shirt from the Mad Ogre chest, and I believe a ninja hat from the uh, Staleman Skull chest. Just ninja stars, actually. Stars, not, right. not even that. It's really bad. So, yeah, instead, uh, we're going to try to get some more experience, and this party is capable of it. We have decent experience now. <laughs> If our wonderful forum can stay alive. Oh, but the lady is charmed now. Oh, charmed, I'm sure. And I am convinced that that target was originally headed for Porum. I you don't have to convince me that <laughs> yeah. And there is a holy sword. So uh, the Cecil watch is officially on. We have a nice shiny stick for him. And that means that, uh, you know, uh, the hook character becomes vital and then once underground, if Cecil hasn't been found yet, that makes Dwarf Castle that much more uh, attractive. And here we have simultaneous entrances into the Eblin underground. Uh, the difference, of course, Dave has done all of the Eblin Castle trap chests in order to get the levels. Poydrick, though, managed to slingshot not slingshot really, but get quite a few levels uh, more than Dave. Okay, so I saw coffins. Yeah, in this and white. Coffins and Bacchus wines for sale, along with Thor Rages, in case you didn't get a stack of those uh, earlier. Also, diet food, in case you need something uh, to have with that wine. And so both runners uh, picking up the necessary wares. A wizard shirt uh, for sale and samurai arrows and mute arrows. And Dave picking up a stack of both. Fantasia, are you funneling money toward toward Enja Dave? I am not. Look, look, I, <laughs> I, I may wear my biases on my sleeve. Okay, and I and I will admit to that, but I will not cheat. I am not not that bad. All right. <laughs> and today will be the first to check out the character. It is a duplicate Tella. Ew. Okay, so Dave actually being rewarded by kind of making the more efficient check by not checking this character. That's. That's interesting. I would have, if this would have been the Cecil and Poydrick would have then popped out to get levels on his Cecil rather than do than do the order that Dave did. Like I could see Poydrick making up quite a bit of time in the long run, but Duplicate Tella, I think gives a bit of an edge to, to Dave right back. It swings right back to him. And remember, uh, unlike in the Potion Party flag set, in the Moonvale Mixer flag set, Duplicates are allowed, so now both parties have two tellers. And so you, you have uh, both sages in the party, and Poidrak is going to dive, not going to exit out and take on those Eblin trap chests. I, I get it, and it's it's probably the right play because he already had some great experience that he got from that twin art crowd. Um, we're at 37 minutes, so it's about at the time where you're like, eh, I, I feel like I should probably be going underground anyway. 
These trap chests have a distinctly vanilla feel to them. One of the trap chests in Castle Eblin was a vanilla, and the Mad Ogre is uh, now in their vanilla location. We did see the second boss along the hook route was Dr. Luge. This team uh, can take on Dr. Luge, especially Yong with that Thunderclaw will be doing some work. I don't know if there were lit arrows uh, available. Those would help as well. And Dave getting superb luck on the stone with Teller from the middle slide. He's hit like every single one and not missed so far. I hope he realizes how lucky he's gotten this time. Now, to be fair, Poydrick doesn't have Tell in his middle slot for the extra accuracy. So, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily comparing apples to apples here, but still, I don't recall Tella ever having this much luck when I, when I use it, so. Poydrick, meanwhile, has double floor inspectors. You don't, you don't need everybody to inspect the floor. But that is Tella's greatest task, I suppose. Using the coffins that he purchased uh, on these Mad Ogres versus the stone cast. So um, certainly able to get, again, more experience out of doing this than anyone. Oh, and Dave immediately resets out because that is a Vigen. Yeah, and... that is a brick wall at that spot. It, it's going to be really, really tough. Vigen goes fast at that spot, hits like a truck, uh, and hits with both arms. Uh, and as you saw, a, a front row Yong even with a black belt on, I suppose, uh, just taking 800 damage. And so, needs to refit, needs to prepare, but he's gonna go straight at it because, as you said, Vitasia, this guy is fearless. Yeah, this is going to test both of our runners here because this is an incredibly punchy spot. Um, and we, the problem is that there's not a whole lot we can do. Now, we have four presumed casters of Blink right now. The problem is we can't keep them up. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much... Uh, there's only so much Blink you can cast when you're inspecting that floor, making sure it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, that vampire on the uh, Yong will slowly drain his HP. And yeah, this is going to be a rough one. And so far, it's Bygen 2, Runners nothing. And where are the arms on a truck? Chat wants to know. Anywhere the truck wants them to be. I mean, Mr. Bus Driver seems to be an expert in buses, and he does indicate that they have a stop arm and sometimes a crossing arm. So I'm going to defer to the expert on that one. <laughs> Poydrak is, does cast Berserk on Yong, at least, uh, at least going for it here. Yong gets it right in the face, and yeah, that's another reset. All right, so we got two resets to one reset on Boydrick's side. I think this <laughs> is one of the, let's keep track of all the resets and see, oh, Boydrick's noping out. He's like, nah, I need some yeah. more experience. Yep. I, okay. I like this play. Yeah, so we were talking earlier about the Soma drops for sale in Baron. Do you go all the way back there um, and just try to uh, get Tella to 100 HP and try to keep him up long enough that, so that he can cast Medio? No. <laughs> like, I love that line of thinking. 
But yeah. Medio is such a long cast. It is. He's so mm. fragile. He's, he's gonna break a hip. There aren't enough blinks in the world to uh, fully uh, keep him up. Because remember, the uh, arms are also casting the spells that uh, go through Blake like Vampire. Engine Dave thinks he has a strategy here. Maybe he thinks it's just bad luck on some of the uh, targeting. He's going right back into it. Oh, he's going to use a big bomb trying to knock the two arms down to give him a little bit of breathing room. And I didn't see who had that big bomb queued up. It is Tella, who survives. Does take down the arms. That e the arms revive. That e Ninja, that's you're right, it is a bold move. That is exactly the point of our teammate. So <laughs> it, he's, he's buying time. He's buying time. That's all he's doing. It's a bold strategy, Feigen. Let's see how it works out for him. But yeah, this Feigen going so, so fast. Uh, I don't know if Silk Webs were for sale anywhere. That would be a really good time to use one of that, as uh, Fiery Blizzard pointing out in chat. But he uh, did pick one up in Castle Eblin, so there is one out there. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Gang goes down. A, a really bad target there. Poydrak gonna find the Mad Ogres first. And Poydrak has his two Tellas on the end. Uh, so hopefully not relying on them to do any stone cast. Let's face it, if you're either one of these runners, you get through this Bagan, you go back and safety safe, right? <laughs> I mean, it would be a bold strategy not to. What it not? Okay, there's bold and there's. <laughs> I'm not gonna. There's another word that I would call that, and not bold. I will say that. I too like to live dangerously. Poydrak getting the life uh, glitches off very nicely on these mad ogres. But that Yong doing work on Enja Dave's side. Do you have a good idea of uh, how many more hits it's going to take against the Spigen? I don't. And I know he's berserked. He's got his Yong berserked up and he's, he's stabilized it. Down goes the vampire arm. That's the dangerous one. Now we can, we, we're good. I think Dave has stabilized this now. So the uh, fourth time of asking does have, he has gotten farther against this Feigen than he has uh, before. Keeping those blinks up. And this is what having three blink casters does for you. I mean, there's no experience from this particular spot, so there's no reason to even try to keep the forum up. It's like, okay, no. Do what you will do whatever you need to do to make sure your blink casters are rolling. Oh, and she switching over to the samurai arrows, and then we got ourselves a second Zerker now because we have all the other uh, blink casters up and rolling. Yes. And down goes the snake arm again. This is another lucky roll. It is not snake arm time. But really impressive work here from Engine Dave to hold out for this long. 
uh, playing kind of a musical chairs with the flanks. Little unfortunate on the, uh, the targets, but it... and that uh, and and Rosa will help because she can do full damage to the back row. And down goes the body and explode. No matter. And Engine Dave is through Bygan. Well done. That was incredibly well done. The textbook by Dave. It's um, and we have Dr. Luge in the Ruby spot. I, Dave is definitely turning right around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that one step forward gets me every single time. No, you're not doing it. And then I forget the game does that for you. The game pushes you forward. But it, equipping with a Thunderclaw, this fight should be much less fraught. And that's a big, big advantage for both strategy. Yeah, I'm curious. I don't recall seeing Poydrick pick up a Thunderclaw, but I, I'm going to lean on our trackers for that information, if he did or not. Because that's that's going to make up quite a bit of time here, honestly. Uh, this Dr. Lugay does have a Thunder weakness, so him being able to just punch his way through this pretty quickly, um, even though we're a little bit over level, under level, uh, certainly is going to help quite a bit. I believe Poitrak did pick up a Thunderclaw. I, I'm going to say that he did. Like all slapstick routines, it has a predictable ending. Maybe uh, Baldab just had the confusion status, and that's why he couldn't tell. Maybe he was charmed. Well, we had a Tella... <laughs> One of our duplicate Tellas knocked over again. Meanwhile, Poitrick is doing a little bit more shopping, saying, yeah, I, uh, I used up a lot of my coffins. Can I refresh? And also <laughs> buy some Bacchuses as well. Yeah. Bacchuses, I think, uh, even more important uh, going forward. And so uh, the good doctor will operate Balnab directly now and... Uh, I wonder if Ninja Dave knows anything about that. Seems like something an engineer would do. Operate a robot directly. See, to me, it, it's interesting. Uh, the more I look at that sprite, the more I realize, it's like, oh, this is this is the Gen 1 Magitek armor from Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> just, yeah. You take the head off and jump in where the head is, and, and you're piloting it around. Well, that button... <laughs> Dr. Lugay asked what that button does. It did 2,800 damage to Yong is what it did. So we'll have some recovery to do. See, that was a funny line when you're a kid. But as an adult, you're like, didn't you design this? And then you realize, <laughs> no, he's a doctor. He had his grad assistant help build it. And that grad assistant did not get the grade he wanted. So he put that button in and didn't actually tell Dr. Lugay what happened. This is what happens when you employ evil scientists, you know, at a university. Undergrads just start changing designs. Well, how are the stale men like the Wicked Witch? Uh, they're both giving away apples. And so, actually, chat pointing out that uh, Yong getting uh, hit in the face with that explode, actually a good thing because Young can now be berserked. Uh, when your character is poisoned, uh, the berserk status does not stick. Gong was gassed and then immediately healed, and now he is gassed again. Uh, my goodness. 
and got hit with the laser. And Poitrack running out of uh, easily accessible trap chests and will face the music. Yeah, this is something where, I mean, we're still not comfortable with our levels. We're, you know, mid to high 20s. Um, but the Bygan fight is one that levels with this party aren't necessarily going to help you a whole lot. You, you kind of have to finesse your way through. But I think we all, there's four blank casters at this point in time. But Dave is through. First one into the underworld at, at 53 minutes. Um, while Poydrick is just starting this Bygan fight, um, we'll see when Poydrick enters the Underworld. Um, oh, oh, that, that was blue a blue robe. robe. Yes. So that could be the football gauntlet we desire and crave. It could just be the water hag. So does Enja Dave turn around and go right back up to Keyless Tower to find out? It's doubtful, but that would be a bold play. It would be a bold play. I think, I mean, it it doesn't guarantee you go mode though. We're we're still a couple items short. You know, we still we need a Baron key. We need a Darkness crystal. Um, if we were closer to go mode, I would absolutely say it. But I think Dave is going to go over here to Dwarf Castle. We're looking for extra party members because this party has some gaps that we need to fill. Yeah. It Namely, a tele-shaped gap. Well, the gap, like, no, it's not a tele-shaped gap. Like, tele is currently slotted in, but it's like square hole, round peg sort of thing. Like, we need, we need, he's filling it, but it's not, not really doing it. It's bringing leaks and, yeah. Dwarf Castle knows how to whistle, don't you? But, unfortunately... Leviathan summons, eh, not, not uh, what they're looking for. And Poydrak is through Vigan. Very, oh, very quickly. Yeah, that was fast. Okay. Yeah, yeah that Stardust uh, really helped, and then, um, and and then Yong did the rest, and. Uh, must have been equipped with cat claws, I suppose, because was doing Bafo damage. I was going to say cat claws were in Dwarf Castle. Um, where where was the Stardust Rod? Hmm, don't know. Unless he was just using the Stardust item that we he, had. That remember, yeah, he, I believe Dave used one. Yeah, yeah, I believe uh, that was a leftover Stardust item. And Dave encounters three dancing dark imps. Which I bet this is, uh, dancing is an important part of their culture. You know, that tracks. I can yeah. see that being factual. Poydrak will slow down the comedy stylings of Dr. Luge and Balnab. Dr. Luge has an ouchie. To him, I say, Dr. Heal, heal thyself. Life glitching as best as we can through those dark imps. I, I do like that play, because remember, Dave is not on the same levels as Poydrick, and Poydrick is making very quick work of everything up here, so certainly in a better position. And B -b 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 -bonus. bonus round! <laughs> so, 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 so. And a vanilla Rydia who promptly grows up and takes Tella's job. This is a Demis, pretty good spot uh, to find Demis, only 3000 HP or so here. Uh, should be able to take care of it with a minimum of face changes. Spot's also fairly slow. Yeah, trying to keep Rydia up because we would, uh, we're in the the point where this would absolutely be a slingshot. Oh no, transformed. Yeah, uh, and Yong is gonna 
Nope, he's not gonna uh, attack right then. So Poitrack did a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Poitrack did uh, get through the Vigan fight much, much more quickly than Engidave did. Uh, his Balnap fight, though, not going as fast. I, I, uh, I'm not seeing the Thunderclaw on his yacht. Yeah. yeah, I'm not seeing it either. Must not have it. And Jadave is through. And learns warp on Rydia. That is nice for her. Does don't doesn't have to uh, revive that Tell in order to take advantage of the warp glitch. And we get the ghost hand. Ooh, spooky. And Poidrak putting up a Star Veil on that Yong to prevent the, the beams. I like that play. That's interesting. I don't know if I've seen that tech before. Oh, no. Darkness. Darkness. Is our pillow. Hello, darkness, my old friend. And an Earth Crystal. It's time to do the machine again. <laughs> <laughs> Will and you Dave do that? I hear the weakness slowly spinning. Now here's the question. If you're inclined to do a D-Machine grind, do you first check that Earth Crystal? See if there's a character or two you would rather have than your current party. Um, hmm. You can get through it. Like if you can get through it pretty fast, and you're not happy. That being said, I mean you got you got Tella. You got at least one Black Mage for Nuke, who I don't know if she's still in Slingshot range or not. Probably not, honestly. And Edge of Dave not forgetting Demist. Going to check out Rydia's mom. Oh, that's go mode. That's go mode. It is it? absolutely go mode. Baron key. You have no, 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 no. Mm, kind of. Yeah, kinda. It's, it's, it's it's a coin flip go mode because top of tower is a blue robe. Yeah. Coinrick does get through. Oh, boy. And here goes Enja Dave. Is he going to check the uh, treasury at just after an hour? No, he's not. He is going to the top of tower. He wants some characters. This is an interesting play because you're hoping, you're fishing for another, for maybe a Cecil here. Yeah. This is the only reason that you're making this play. We have an Excal, we have some decent gear. You're fishing for a Cecil. And, you know, if the Adamant Rock is up here, then it's uh, for sure go mode. But, uh, yeah, all the key items that MJ Dave needs, assuming the Fubu Gauntlet is somewhere out there. Point the dress Taylor makes a good point. Um, yeah. Do you D-Machine before you know if there's Sirens or not? Because Sirens are faster. Um, the The nice thing about D-Machine is if you're in a slingshot perspective, it does really speed it up, uh, especially if you have a nuke caster, just because they need so much more experience. And Poitrack going through the back of Dwarf Castle here. Still wants to loot out, it looks like. Edge of Dave really wanted to pet a dog. All the dog had was a piece of Dragoon armor. And so All right. 
tower. Boydrak was uh, hovering over the staff staff, but uh, did not pick one up. And then Jadave learning Leviathan on that Rydia. Uh, that indicates to me that he uh, sees her as a valuable member of this team and that it, Rydia is unlikely to be replaced no matter who is up here. Unless he's just trying to, like, find a sweeper. Like, if there, this is an a enemy that needs to be swept. Um, okay, so Poydrick now set up. Again, a little bit better levels. We'll probably be getting through these DMs a little bit faster. We have a Pale Din. And so, no Leviathan against Pale Din. Uh, any summon against uh, Pale Din gets countered with Quake. Which hurts a lot. Yeah, so we can't do that. Uh, we also can't use Tella to cast Float on everyone because he is out of MP. So now you're just like, okay, we're gonna Zerk up Yang and let him do work because he's a high enough level. He's got double Cat Claws and a Zeus Gauntlet. He's got enough stat boost that he's he, you can rely on him to get through this. Maybe not as fast as you normally would, but it'll do. Yeah, you do uh, get serenaded with the song of Pale Din. But this is a reliable, but if slow, way to get through Pale Din. And so while our, our runners are uh, going through that, do want to thank our restreamer, Scala Kitty, and our tracker, uh, Bangagong. And uh, thank you, Vitasia. You're watching uh, your teammate, Enja Dave, take on uh, Poydrak here. If Poydrak wins, uh, the team time zones are us wins for this week. If uh, Enja Dave wins, Bolt Strategy and time zones are us will come down to a game three, which is tomorrow. Uh, between Nitzi and Alchemy at 1 o'clock Eastern. Sid is the first character here on the Tower of Zot. Not who Engidave was making the trek for, you would assume. And Engidave gets the news that uh, Demis is in the second spot of Dwarf Castle, which we already know. It and is a Palum, though. Hmm. Hmm. I think the big brain play here is take Palum. Oh, no. Okay. No. Absolutely not. I already has a black mage. See, in this case, I would have taken Palum over Porum, knocked mm -hmm. him down for the Rubicon fight, then go and do my D-Machine grind, knowing that I had at least one slingshot. And Dave swapping out an Ice Claw to uh, take care of Ruby. <laughs> and one shot. Do not miss your chance to crumble. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Rubik, it goes down. Poydrak watching that ghost hand. And we'll see if uh, he makes the same play as Dave, immediately checking that D-Mist. And Dave going to check the item out of Zot. Oh, it's the adamant. Promo. That is the oh, adamant. Oh, boy. Everything kind of linking into each other, and Enja Dave is in go mode. Yeah, he says, "Okay, I'm right here. I, the Earth Crystal spit me out right in to uh, right outside Baron. Let's go ahead and liberate Baron while we're here." Yes. And uh, the rest. Oh my goodness. Ooh. 
doesn't even need to check the top of tower, has everything he needs. Uh, just needs to go to the moon, conquer the ribbon room, conquer the crystal sword altar, and liberate Barry Castle. And he will have the and, and forge before he leaves the blue planet. And he will have everything he needs. And it, you know, who knows? Uh, liberating Barry Castle could get you the pass. It could get you the pass. It's also another character check. The characters that we have not seen so far, Edward, Cecil, Fu, right? Right. Yeah, we've seen everybody else. Uh, there's the giant and package and, uh, and, and Baron Castle checks. And moon. And moon. Kane, oh, and Edge. Edge. And edge. edge is the other one. Kane is in the oh. bed in Kaipo. Yeah, so you're looking... There's an Edge, Cecil, Boo, and Edward that's out there. So there's three of those four I'm replacing Porum with because we haven't done a grow yet. Mm -hmm. Poidrak doing some shopping in Tamra. The uh, Witchburn from Wyvern is just a lit one across the whole party. Some are, are more explosive than others. And Poidrak going to do some other things underground here. I'm hearing chat say sirens are in Tamra, which is huge. Hey, more vanilla! Yay! We have a turtle on the throne. To his rightful spot. Oh, hi, Thunderclaw, Yong. Now, he's... Uh, did I see he's double catclawing it? Yeah, double catclaws instead. Play Drag Force. Wave! <laughs> Poidrak does find uh, an Excal in the free spot in the Fame Arch. And Rydia will show Kainatsu how a wave is really done. And Kainatsu is waterlogged. That's gotta be embarrassing. If you're the Lord of the Water getting knocked out by a wave, Mm -hmm. Really, Kenyatso? Mm. It's like being the Lord of the Dance and getting knocked out in the dance competition. That's an edge. And I remember from way back early in the game, I, I remember long swords uh, available, but I haven't seen any other good edge weapons unless I'm missing something. Poydrak did pick up a curse ring in the Fame Arch. Look, we're aligning ourselves to get ready to do Yang's Forge. If it's God Hand, that curse ring is going to come in handy. Mm -hmm. um, the, I think the other one is the Dragon Fist, which is not does not increase agility, so I'm pretty sure that's what we're hoping for. Oh, hey, do we want to go get a cane as well? Poydrak finds the Gauntlet. Not on top of tower. Top of tower we know is Water Hag, but that is a Fabul Gauntlet in the King spot in the Bay March. And Poidrak is going to set up shop here and take care of this. This is so interesting because that's going to be his grind in addition to being doing that. So yeah. he's not going to go do uh, Tower of Zod, but he's also not going to have this Forge weapon. Different divergence. Uh, for different sorts of checks up to this point in time. Uh, this is this is going to get spicy very quickly here. And there's the edge weapon. Uh, Murasame is for sale, along with power shirts. A blue robe and a purple robe uh, married to each other in the Fame Arch. That purple robe... Uh, it can either be Mylon Z or Mylon and Friends. We haven't seen either of them yet.
and it is a dragon claw that Yang gets. Not quite sure what the agility implications for that are. I'm a conjurer. Yeah, I'm a conjurer. I get around, 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 around. And Edge Dave does pick up sirens. Uh, also ditched the Tela before. Uh, so certainly no D-Machine grind on the table today. No, and with that, you're, you're set up pretty well. Dave, here's... I think I know what Dave's doing. He's hunting for 10 key items. He's at 8 right now. Um, he's going to check the key items, but I, he's he knows he's in go mode. He, yeah. he absolutely knows he's in go mode. Poydrick so, had to reset out of that. Wow, okay. Yeah, that uh, Arachne beat him up pretty good. And so... Uh, the Dragon Claw is is something cool that uh, was done for Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise. Not in the original game. It's in uh, Final Fantasy IV the After Years. Is that what it's in? It's the, the Game Boy Advance version of okay. Final Fantasy IV. So yeah, yeah, there were some like extra, either some extra dungeons or, or something that let everyone have their, their ultimate weapon. So... Uh, several different versions of it, Dragon Claw, God Hand, things of that nature that just wouldn't normally be available to us at the end game. You know, uh, the, they, the, the randomizer messed with perfection. Uh, why not mess with it a little bit more? No, the randomizer is uh, so much fun. It's breathed really new life into this game. Uh, you know, just because I never played the GBA version, a lot of people got their start on Final Fantasy IV through the GBA version, so nice to bring a little bit of that into the game as well. So Poydrac uh, knows that, uh, that Arachne uh, cast Quake, and so has cast Float on his entire party to get through this fight. Because Arachne is quake happy. Does get through, and he is two fifths of the way through. So, uh, Vitasia, your your teammates with Enja Dave, as we've established, how are you feeling for him uh, at this point? Do you think uh, are you comfortable for him? Do you think he's feeling comfortable with where he is right now, Dave? And I say this with all the love. Dave is one of my best friends that I've made in this community. Dave, I don't know, has a single chill bone in his entire body. I don't <laughs> think he's ever capable of being comfortable in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so, that being said, uh, he's he's probably a pretty nervous right now, but he's also a, one of the one of the most confident runners I know. His game knowledge. Uh, we see it every week when he shares it with his commentary is, uh, you know, second to none. Um, he knows so much uh, and is capable of teaching folks so much. So uh, I think he's he's comfortable. He's probably not so comfortable that he's he's letting up off the gas, though. So um, and taking the football gauntlet because, hey, this is a nice, easy grind as well. Yeah, and it's an objective. <laughs> So it'll allow him to skip either the Ribbon Room or the Crystal Sword Altar if something really nasty is there. Uh, he can just nope out of it. Going to run into the same uh, problem with the Arachne's casting Quake. This did give Poydrak a, a, a setback. We'll see if Dave can get through on the first time and ran out of arrows on Rosa and has to reset. Arachne is no joke. Yeah, uh, Dave 
though, is not setting up the the floats ahead of time like uh, we saw Poidric do. That might be because she doesn't know float, or does she? Oh, yep, she does. Yep. And there he goes. So we'll see if uh, having Edge in this party will uh, help him get through it a little bit faster, too. This uh, clapper giving Poidrak uh, a little bit of a problem, too, but does get rid of it and now just has one last single clapper fight. Uh, double clapper, uh, I should say. Double clapper. Yeah, and clappers are not easy. This, these are definitely the the first. Like these, these are challenging enemies that you would fight normally uh, in the game. Not necessarily a common encounter, but certainly strong. Love I, a thin. Love I, a thin. Kills clappers. You were saying? <laughs> well, in a metaphorical sense. Ooh, what a what a save from Porum. One HP that's all you need survives the blitz. Well that's because the blitz does. No, nope, well, it goes, it goes down then. Yeah, but did get one extra turn out of it. But yeah, as you were saying, Clapper's no joke here. I have a ton of HP. Uh, do that uh, Blitz counter, which can be devastating. But Poidrak is almost through here. Does get through, gets 16,000 cool EXP. And Poidrak now up to three objectives. Gets the pan, and this could lead him the wrong way. That's right. Right now, he, is, he doesn't know how close he is to, I mean, he knows he's close to go mode. He hasn't, he doesn't know where the admin is and he doesn't know where the Baron Castle key is. So, uh, if he follows up that pan and it does look like he will. Yeah, very defensible play. Uh, it, it's the play you kind of feel like you have to make uh, when you uh, had a hard fight and you get rewarded, you kind of have to chase that down. Uh, but it's going to take him further away from where he needs to be. I agree. Here's what I think, because here's what Dave is going to do. And I, I, I I'm going to put my mark on, on shit. I'm putting my chip down on the, on the table. This is what I'm betting Dave does. He's going to get the pan. He's going to be like, I'm at nine key items and I haven't grinded yet. And I have a stack of sirens. He's going to go turn in the pan and do that entire chain, hoping that one of the three things that he picks up along the way is a key item and it will cut his grind time in half. Yeah, once you get 10 key items, uh, all characters uh, gain double experience. So uh, that's why the 10 key items is going to be so important. Uh, and yeah, once Angie Dave gets that pan, he'll be at nine and the pan does have three checks. The math kind of works out. Poidrak going to juggle the airships here. And going to drop off the hovercraft uh, outside the Adamant Grotto so he doesn't have to do that later. Now, one thing uh, Poidrak has not yet checked that D-Mist, uh, which I mention only because uh, sometimes that check can uh, it can go undone. It's real easy to forget, and it was 
now coming close to 20 minutes ago. I mean, he took a wipe from the from the Fabul Gauntlet fight. So when once that happens, once you've wiped on something, it everything else that happened before kind of gets put into the back of your mind. You got to wonder if he's forgotten about it. Um, the end of the Sheila chain just does end with a Luka key and a siren. So it is one key item, and that is exactly, Dave is doing exactly what I predicted. Yes. Uh, the the knowledge, <laughs> the, the teammate knowledge coming in handy here by Tasia telling the future. Uh, but that Luka key almost entirely worthless for Poydrak. There was an, uh, he's already gotten the key item from the uh, sealed cave, and there are no more boss checks. Uh, the three bosses that matter, Fubul Gauntlet, Goldez, and Demas, they're all gone. This is not good for Poydrick, because yeah. right now Poydrick is setting up to go to the moon, and if he full clear, like if he does this before checking what is at that Demas, then. I mean, Dave is, is in effective go mode right now. He's just, it's just a matter of time. It's like, okay, where's the grind? Where do I go? Uh, Poydrick has got to go to Baron or to to uh, to Rydia's mother to get that Baron key and start that. Because it's, oh, it's rough. Dave just saves coming there, just popping the save down so that he can just immediately pop out if there's not a key item. There will be, though. He may not even check the second one. I mean, he might check it just on the off chance there's a Mura or Masa. But I think he's good. Yeah, and so uh, Edge of Dave will be well set up to uh, take a common moon grind, you would think. Uh, unless he really wants to do eggs on the, on the underground. does get that extra siren. Sheila knows what we're up to. Knows we need levels. It's like, dear, it looks like you're about on your way. Here you go. Um, all right, Poydrick is going to be showing us who this moon character is. Again, it's one of three characters, uh, Edward, Cecil, or Fu. I would take two out of those three. Yeah. No spoon yet, but that is a Cecil. That is an insta-joint. And I wonder if that's what Enja Dave is going to do as well. He wants to get those character checks because the difference is, is that big with Cecil. And let's face it, uh, I mean, we do have, you know, we have a full moon mute knife edge, which, okay. And then we have uh, a dragon claw equipped young, which will do work for us on Zero Bus. Getting an Excal Cecil, we're good. That's, so, that's it. That's our party. Poidrak miss, uh, clicked, I think, and equipped a Rune Axe on Cecil. Instead of the Excal. We'll see if he notices. He got the Excal from the Underworld, right? And, and the, yeah. the Trap Chest. Unless yeah, we sold just them. Two of them. But, uh, but yeah, that was a Rune Axe staring me in the face. Uh, so... Maybe Poitrak is uh, looking to, instead of a misclick, maybe uh, Runax does uh, does extra damage against mages. Maybe a Warlock grind is on the table? Yeah, that I can imagine that being the case. Um, yeah, that, that seems to be the most logical decision, if that's the route that he's going. Um, that being said, we're at kind of a weird spot in levels. We're in the, the mid to late 30s, where we need some more levels before we go do Zeromus, but it would also be really nice to, you know, if there happens to be some easy bosses at the two objectives that he has to do, you know, sometimes that's a, a more efficient use of time. And Cecil is picked up on Dave's side, and he's like, yep, time to go grind. Yep. And uh, Rydia served her purpose, but Enja Dave is going to go tackle gold dragons, it looks like. Oh, gonna shop first. I think he wants hourglasses to do the, the dragon grind. 
Yeah. Um, I I certainly would as well. There they are. And that's a whole stack. You want to give credit, uh, by the way, to Microcorks in chat for pointing out uh, the possibility of the Warlock grind. And so, yeah, and Dave in a big, big advantage here. Um, Poydrak will be getting his levels, but uh, going to be getting the levels to full clear the moon, which will get him tantalizingly close to six objectives, but one short. And Dave in a real big advantage. And Dave has the luxury right now of peaking both bosses, both at the Crystal Sword Altar and Vanilla Ribbon Room and saying, which one is going to be easier for my particular party setup? Um, that's that's a luxury that Poydrick is not going to have because he's not, he doesn't, had didn't get the adamant and uh, opted not to go check Demis. That Demis check is, is really unfortunate and I think is the turning point in this particular race. Yeah. Yeah, that Baron Key um, if, if Poydrak had picked it up and had chased it, uh, that would have put Poydrak in go mode as well, and, and he'd be just on a, a different track. Yeah, the, the seed was fairly linear up until that point in time. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of divergence between the two. It kind of flip-flopped. They both were, you know, struggled a little bit on that bygan in order to get into the underworld. It's and then as soon as they got to the underworld, they both immediately went to Dwarf Castle. Um, the difference really was um, Dave saw, you know, once you get out of there, Dave saw the Darkness Crystal, and we had the Demis turn in, and so immediately turned in the Demis. Saw the Baron Key, saw the Earth Crystal from the turn in, like all of that combined led Dave away from the underworld, whereas Poydrick opted to stay in the underworld. Um, and do some of the other checks there. I mean, I, I can't necessarily fault him, but that decision is what changed the race. And so while both runners are grinding, do want to thank once again our restreamer, Scala Kitty, and our tracker, Bangagong, for uh, helping us out in this very entertaining uh, race. You could tell uh, both of these uh, runners well respected, very good uh, at, at what they do, because uh, this race has had some trip ups and uh, some real places to get turned around, uh, especially that Bygen at the King Queen Evelyn spot. Both runners have, have done very well uh, with it. It is that routing decision that is uh, that is coming down to it. Uh, and thank you, Fatasia, for uh, joining me in, uh, in in neutrally assessing Enja Dave and, and Poydrak's play. Uh, if Enja Dave does pull this out, it'll be 1-1. One, one, and uh, the game tomorrow uh, between Nitsi and Alchemy will loom very large. It's at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, don't yet have uh, information on the channel, but join our Discord. Uh, for uh, for all of the information on that. Oh, and in fact, actually, I do have information on that. That will be broadcast on Free Enterprise, the Prime channel, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern and, and 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Uh, for you time zones are us uh, fans over there. Alchemy versus Nitsi. And, and just to, uh, Nitsi is the deciding, and uh, of course, Bold Strategy teammate Night Dew is going to be joined by Dubwort on the mic. So uh, it's going to be another completely unbiased and fair minded commentary <laughs> with absolutely no favoritism, Shem, whatsoever. Th that's something we can count on Bold Strategy to do is be disinterested. Not disinterested, 
unbiased. There's a difference, sir. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, Night Dew. I'm sorry I spoiled that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're we're breaking all the news here. I feel like we need to this needs a reintroduction to the Lunar News Network. Yeah. Uh, a return to the old my gosh, that we had a, a screen crawl and everything. Yes. Yes, that was good. That was that was a lot of fun to uh to see. And so, uh, both runners now uh, grinding. I know Poydrak has a stack of 10 sirens left. Uh, and Dave is getting through each fight a, a little bit faster. Um, and, and the dragon claws uh, against dragons, slicing and dicing them up. And Enja Dave is done with his grind. Yeah, I mean, worth pointing out, Dave did quite a few more checks. Uh, Poydrick is doing this grind with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He got it. So he is not getting quite the the massive boost to his party that Dave is. Dave was able to take just a handful of dragons and he's like, I'm good. We're level 50. And so Dave going to take on the ribbon room and you have to imagine unless this is uh, an absolute stopper, He's going to take it and not even check out the Crystal Sword Altar. Hey, did you know that our Edge is rocking a mute knife right now? <laughs> well, if the sisters don't know, they're going to know very, very soon. Quad nines. Good of course, the squad nines didn't kill. <laughs> well, the second quad nine did though. And Edge has dumped some angry juice, and he is swinging away. Rosa's hey, let Rosa hit things. She's doing her best. <laughs> She's doing her best young impression. Um. Gosh. Yeah, a, a little bit of unfortunate targeting, actually. Uh, Cindy, kept alive, might have enough time to revive her sisters. Sister she... grind? No, <laughs> no. no, that doesn't... No, that... Okay, no. Sisters, when we're grinding, I get so excited. No, no, no we, we, have, we have to plug this right now does get the crystal and is ready for Zeromas. Wondering if he was looking for some extra darts there. Darts or or likely a Masamune. Yeah. Something to help out at that point. Is putting the Thunderclaw instead of the Catclaw on Yong here. Catclaw does boost agility a little bit, so he is setting up his agility so that he's in a better position to kind of get everything off. Three strong melee fighters. I think, you know, we're in a position where it's going to be close to two, maybe three big bangs at this point in time, but as long as Rosa can survive an unnerfed Big Bang, we're in a good position here. Uh, and Fiery Blizzard is asking us a this, this is Z question, right? Like, what's is it nap time? It is late. I, well, depending on which time zone you're in, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, well, this isn't time zones are us. This is bold strategy, making the trek down to Zeromus. Zeromus doesn't go anywhere, can't uh, show up anywhere else in the game. Uh, just, he doesn't want to move, but he does want to dress up. And so, 
being a randomizer, we will grant that wish and uh, clothe Z in one of over 600 different sprites. And so the question we always ask at this point of the game, Fantasia, please do so. Oh, okay. Hang on, I want to mm. clear my throat for this one. Mm. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And Engidave into the Z fight at just after 137, looking very, very good to secure the win for Bold Strategy, which would push this week into a pivotal game three tomorrow. The crystal is thrown. We are about to get our questions answered. After Z and, stretches a little bit. And with this party, it's kind of power overwhelming. Ultramus. Don't tease oh. the octopus, kids. Mmm, seafood soup. Muscle heads? Hate them. <laughs> now, this, I believe, was one of the very first disease sprites that were added, just because Ultra is such a classic uh, a boss in, in, in Final Fantasy. We're pointing out this is not the this ultra this ultra sprite is not the first ultra sprite that you see in Final Fantasy 6. Uh, he, remember, he, because he's underwater in, in the first fight, spoiler alert by the way, if you've ever played it, your <laughs> first fight with him is in the river and all you see is his head. You don't get to see all the all the tentacles coming out. It's just his head right there. So is this particular sprite from the from the opera stage? I yeah, th this one is from the opera. Yeah. Stage, yeah. Big Bang comes out. That is nerfed. And no worries for Engine Dave. You can never completely. Uh, Z is never free, uh, but Engine Dave has this fight well in hand. Yeah, this is power overwhelming. I think even Porum can survive an unnerved Big Bang at this particular point. Uh, certainly is set up incredibly well right now. Poydrak, meanwhile, gets the wrong crystal. Yep, checking everything else. Uh, not immediately going over to the Crystal Sword Altar, because, again, he is still key item hunting. Does not know he has the answer already completed. Oof. Yeah. Yep, gonna check out the... Ogo Pogo spot and still Engidave still has five folks up. With yep. another cure forecast. Wow, yeah. saved the HP ran out. <laughs> Love to see it. Yeah, My we're not gonna see Quint Zerk. I, I appreciate J Brun saying Quint Zerk. Uh, I will say this again, Dave doesn't meme during races. If this was a community <laughs> race, he would totally do it, but he does not meme in races. But we're at Rock's phase already. A triple dodge. And it's all over but the Caterwally. Crash, boom, bang, and Ultramus goes down. Engidave saves me from my blunder, ties it all up. So the race tomorrow, uh, Nipsey versus Alchemy, one o'clock Eastern time is going to decide the team race. And we are now joined by Engidave. How's it going, buddy? Thank you for, for the win. <laughs> So that's what it feels like to be on the receiving end of the Boss X Runner Zero jokes. 
yeah, you seem to make all the uh, the right decisions uh, there uh, after after a while. Uh, what did you think of that scene? Uh, no, I do think you deserve to deserve that book route with that party. <laughs> yeah, that was a rough, rough fight. I uh, bribed Colin with cookies next to me for even worse one. Understood. Yeah, that that Bigen at that particular spot was nasty. I mean, both of you bounced off that. So, you know, no shame in that uh, bouncing that. You you did manage to get the blinks up eventually and get through it, um, which was nice as yeah, Poitrick having... finds the magma key. But yeah. Yeah, having three blink casters, you're eventually going to get get them off. I think what helped us the, that last attempt throwing the Boreas to buy some time by killing the arms off. Yeah, I thought that was exactly what you were doing. It's like, all you need is a couple rounds. And then after that, it seemed like you're, once you got Young zerked up and then Rosa, they were just laser focused on keeping that, that vampire casting arm down. Like It came up and it would immediately fall again, which was nice. Aside from that, uh, fun seat overall. Just, uh, you know, it's interesting playing with lower power. We can't just do through, Yeah. So we know we saw the blue robe at the top of tower on your way down. We presumed at some point someone would go check that. After your dwarf castle, though, you, you got the earth crystal, you got the darkness crystal. Um, I mean, opt you obviously opted to go that route, and then from there it was go mode. Um, were, did you ever think that, hey, I need to go check top of tower and I, do this coin flip, or...? If I hadn't seen exactly the gauntlet in the Fame Arch, I, that was my next stop. But I, was going, I went to that Fame Arch anyway because I was shopping for hourglasses. And I figured while I was down there, I'd keep the bosses, and lo and behold, gauntlet shows up. Yeah, that really uh, saved you a check on the moon. Uh, so that was nice. Also, the Earth Crystal check was entirely for characters, except party. Um, well, it was something. I mean, you checked it for characters, and I mean... And walk with the objective, so... Yeah, so it like, okay, well, it turned out. <laughs> So how do you approach it when you have uh, characters with, with lower power for so much of the game? What's kind of oh, your that's... mind when you start with a, with a young Tella and don't find much of anything else for half the game? That's what, that early, that's, what that, that, that's what all that early shopping was about. I was looking for vampires because vampires will just destroy the overworld. Unfortunately, they were not to be found. Yeah, not nowhere, uh, at least that we saw. I don't know if anybody checked the aggers, but uh, none of the usual suspects had the vampires. Also, uh, did Poitrack find a curse ring at any point? He did. They were for sale in the Fey March. Okay, so too late to deal with the uh, with Bion. Yeah, definitely no yeah. curse rings available in the overworld that we saw. Even then, it wouldn't help much. It would just Rose open the Zerker with two blinks backing her up. You also got the superior claw, I, I want to point out. You didn't get saddled with a god hand that we had to juggle like eight different things well, that, to measure out agility. That dragon claw was why I started hunting for hourglasses because you saw what it was doing to the gold dragons. Oh yeah, it melted them. Absolutely. I'm fairly certain there were a few hits for nines in there. Yeah, we had, we had kind of figured out that by the time you did Baron check, we started counting. There were four character checks left, or there were, and you'd already seen your duplicate. So it's like, okay, there was going to be either an Edge, Edward, Cecil, or Foo at every check that you we made at that point in time it's like we've already gotten all of our zomp characters except edward out of the way so like 
three quarters of the time, you're going to take whatever character is going to be showing up here late game. And even the edge was worth taking because I had a handful of darts for him and a mute knife. Yeah, we saw you trying to make room for uh, purchasing. Uh, I think the Murrahs were for sale. The Murrahs, I, I, like, I that, don't yeah. I'll reduce for those. We'll just get some more strength for whoever shows up. Well, this continues uh, your uh, your really stellar tournament. You're, you're undefeated so far uh, in the tournament. What do you uh, attribute your, uh, your good run to, and why is it Batasia? Uh, oh, it, it, working with Patasia. <laughs> no, honestly, the whole team we did some pra we did uh, some pra we've been doing some practice races together. They've helped a lot, sharing ideas, especially in well, more so in Potion Party. I would say this is more of a traditional flight set. And, a, and throwing a little bit of luck on this run, too. Well, your win uh, today sets up a pivotal game three uh, for tomorrow on the Free yeah. Enterprise Network uh, between Nitsi and Alchemy. Uh, any uh, words of advice, any encouragement you want to give Nitsi at this time? Okay, first, Nitsi, uh, roll a better party than this. And secondly, uh, let's go out there and have some fun. There's your advice. There you go. That's what it's all about. Well, Fantasia, do you have any uh, final questions for your teammate? I mean, no, GG's. It, this was really fascinating to do commentary on, Dave, because we have been practicing, and I, we've run so many things together that I know what you were going to do. So every time I made a prediction, it actually came true. So thank you. For oh, that. no, you're in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the front of my head. Don't go into other places. It's scary there. Oh, yeah, no, I don't open those other doors. No, I no, no, no. Good. Uh, I think first, uh, yeah, I would like to thank uh, you two for doing comms. Um, Scholar for Rolling's Gem of a Seed. Oh, is it a gem? And thank you all for pushing the buttons. And for the show on without you. And we couldn't put it on uh, no. without you. Congratulations on the win once again and GG's. And best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. And now I'm gonna go have a drink after this seat and go play and go play a Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> have fun. Thank you. All right, and with that, Poydrick is still, you know, I, I applaud Poydrick's commitment to the full clear of the moon. Um, in not doing Earth Crystal, not checking that Baron key or the the, the turn in with Gridia's mother, um, by now has seen Dave's not done, um, certainly knows, and it's like, okay, just where, where was the answer? Um, and the unfortunate thing is the answer has been in your back pocket the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, it is unfortunate, but uh, has been uh, doing quite well on the moon. Did take down uh, Valvalis at the Crystal, uh, Crystal Sword Altar. Did take down the Lunars, uh, who were a, a little bit mean uh, at the Murasame Altar. The Lunars were hot desking it today. Didn't want to stay in their, in their office. And yeah, the uh, Masamune altar uh, also had an evil wall. So not, not an easy moon to do. No, and it's interesting because the, the deviation between Dave and Poydrick has also led to quite a different party. We got three mages, um, set up here um, and through all of this we're just now getting to the point where we're at 10 key items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 10. okay so the previous one was 10 that's 11 for the spoon which is I mean this doesn't feel very good right now no matter how you slice it no and, and that's you know, 
that's one of the things about getting to the end of the seed. Like, you, sometimes you just want to know. You want to Columbo it, <laughs> and like, okay, where where did I need to go? And uh, Boy Drag doesn't have the answers yet, uh, but he is still looking. Here's the interesting thing. Like, even if he doesn't turn in the, you know, doesn't check Rydia's mom, uh, if he goes to the Earth Crystal, which is the only check that he knows he has left, uh, that does lead to the Adamant Rock, which does give him his final objective. Yeah. Um, we also don't have the pass yet, which is strange. Yeah. Where could that... Uh, and and Dave did kind of run through everything, but we don't have the tower key, we don't have the rat tail, and we don't have the uh, pass. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, Baron Basement must contain part of that chain. Well, we didn't check Baron Basement, and we didn't check um, the Queen spot. Like, we... The, it was in... So, you know, one of those two is going to lead, because one of those is going to lead to the rat tail or tower key. Like, there's going to be a chaining that happens at some point there. But Poydrak is going to uh, is going to get his sixth objective this way. And yeah, this was a pale dam up at this spot. Coming through the mist. Yeah, we're not going to get a whole lot of dudes here. Um... No, Cecil should be should be able to slice and dice his way through this. I had to do it while I still could. One, but one more doot doot for the road. <laughs> more like doot done. Yeah, do you think uh, Poydrak will take either a, a Sid or a Palum? You know, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no. Wow. Have you been practicing the boy track too? You know what he's going to do. What can I say? I, you know, I, I'm just good at my job. I've been doing this commentary <laughs> thing for so long. <laughs> the sarcasm has been dripping through this whole broadcast, and I am here for it. I love it. <laughs> I, I, I think we're being sincere. Sincerely awesome. That's what right. I say. And so Poydrak will uh, take on this Rubicant, and again, this should not take terribly long. Rydia has Ice 3, and that'll take care of that. We also have an ice block, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A good uh, target on that glare. And sometimes it just feels good to just absolutely obliterate a boss. Yeah, one shot, just knock him right out. Yeah, that feels good. And there's Nuke. Yay! Yay! <laughs> this uh, this Z is going to wind up quite dead. Boy Jack will get the good news about his dragon claw shortly. We'll see if he wants to pick up uh, Stardust Rods, the Power Shirts from that uh, cocoa shop. 
did not pick up the edge so that uh, yep. Hanzo Steel not interesting. Yep, that was from Bearing, which uh, will be the one objective that Poidrift does not complete at this point in time. So, yeah, the, the Stardust Rugs and Power Shirts are kind of what we're here for. I would... Interesting to see that we didn't have any adamant armors. We opened quite a oh. few trap chests as well. So Poidrek did pick up a pink tail, so he could go get one if he wants one. And the Zeus Gauntlet uh, for sale as well, but we got one of those. The King gave us one way back at the beginning of the game. And so, Batasia, I don't know if, uh, if you've done scouting uh, for this team. Uh, obviously, Poidrak and Aerith uh, and, and Alchemy, uh, very good runners. Um, what are you kind of expecting for the pivotal game three tomorrow? All right, I'd, I'd have to paint this picture right now. Uh, imagine... I think this is Rocky IV, when someone asked Mr. T his prediction for the outcome for his fight coming up, and he just turned and slowly looked at the screen and went, Hey! <laughs> now, I'm not expecting any pain. Um, in fact, I would really prefer there to be not very much pain, but... Um, uh, no, it's going to be a fantastic race. Again, you, you said it, both Nitsi and Alchemy are fantastic members of the community. Again, both members of our, of our restream and broadcast teams. Uh, in fact, I think everyone on Bold Strategy is a member of the restream teams. <laughs> and a lot of people in, in the Time Zones or Us are as well. So this was kind of a, uh, a duel to the death of Unks broadcasting teams. So it's it's been fun this week in particular. Uh, it's going to be a good race, though. And that's a part of the fun about this uh, format, is you get to uh, have those bonds with your teammates, show up for each other's races, uh, cheer them on, and uh, and it, it's fun that there, this individual race uh, has ramifications beyond, you know, whether you win or not. It, it, uh, it helps the team. And I think that's yeah, a I mean, great I... dynamic in this tournament. Yeah, it's... You know, it's it's interesting because in other tournament formats, you know, a a single loss or one or two losses can knock you out. But this has been a great because it's a team event. You know, I can have a loss this week, but the team still lifts me up. You know, in other weeks, um, you know, anyone other than Dave has had a loss and everyone else lifts us up. I don't know what's going to happen when Dave is not running for us. He is 5-0 and o right now, so we have kind of some hard decisions to make over the next couple weeks, but um, that's the, the beauty of this trade team format. It's, you know, the team can un uplift you. Individual performances matter, but the team can uplift you as well. And Poidrak starts his descent. As we said, no pass found uh, in this. Kind of unusual with uh, how much was still available when uh, Poidrak started his moon play that the moon didn't contain more key items. There was the package from the ribbon room, there was the magma key, uh, which means we could get underground now. There was the spoon, uh, but yeah, that's that's not much for a, a full moon clear. Oh, and the pink tail. Now, we put the Cat Claw on, but also have the Cursed Ring on our Yom. So he's going to be hitting, but he's not going to be hitting so hard. Oh, Poidrick, please remember to take that Heroin Robe off Rosa if he has a Silent Staff. And both Rosa and Rydia have Heroin Robes on. So Heroin Robes... Uh, really increase your, your defense and your physical attack, but they decrease your magic ability. Yeah, I mean, they're they're great for letting them hit things, mm. um, but when it comes to doing anything with magic casting, 
you know, Rosa, who even with just a, a piece of leather armor could, you know, hit reasonably hit 1500 HP per person per heal for a cure four, that that gets almost cut in half with that, you know, when you put a heroin robe on. So that's that's kind of a, a tough spot to be in right now. But Poitrak, uh, certainly hoping that the firepower of the rest of the team will be enough to carry him through. We'll get to see uh, who he's facing down, and we know it's a big squid. Again, a little bit different of a party, although I guess at the end it wasn't. I mean, swap out Rydia for Edge, and that's the only difference, because Dave did go in with double white mages as well. Rosa will be the one to do the honors, throw the crystal. And you must hate it when Ultra shows up. Too bad. <laughs> he will always continually show up, no matter what. Did you miss me? Last time, I promise. <laughs> and gonna go for a little bit of a hybrid strat here. We'll get to nerf that first big bang. With that silk web, oh, that silk web must be heavier than he thought. It'll take him at least five minutes to drop it. Uh, petition, if, uh, if there are any other Ultra Sprites that are out there, petition to name them Uncle Ultimus. <laughs> so this Rydia has a Stardust Rod, but also a Heroin Rope, so that nuke doing 7,000 damage, which is nice, but not as much as it could be. Big Bang comes out nerfed. No issues there. The white cast from Rosa. Another almost 7,000 damage. Uh, question from Captain Phoenix Jones in chat. Have we taken photos of runners and made them into zero miss characters? We've not taken photos of characters. Um, we of, of our right. of other runners, but Winners of races, or at least finalists of every tournament, generally speaking, have had some sort of Z-themed sprite created of them and introduced during the race. I mean, historically speaking, not every time, uh, but, you know, there's a couple, you know, I remember Dusty Griff has, you know, a couple sprites running around uh, that, that, of course, Scala ends up working on kind of on her own time, so... In rivers, there's everyone through it all. Um, she, Scala's telling me names in my ears. You know, rivers, Pancras, um, all these other winners. They're all out there in the pool. So that is definitely one of the benefits of, of running in these tournaments is if you win or participate, you, there's a chance of uh, even having a custom sprite made at some point. So. Yeah, even if you just... Uh... Uh, participate in the community. I have a Z Sprite in the pool that I won from a raffle uh, at one point, so uh, it is a lot of fun. And you'll know it if and when you see it. But Poidrak takes down Ultra SMS in the time of 2.06.33. GG's to Poidrak. Not a uh, bad time, just missed out on the one shortcut that really would have helped. 
Yeah, I, I think anyone getting into the Underworld sub one hour with that particular Bygen fight, I mean, deserves a GG's regardless. And we are now joined by Poydrick in the booth. GG's. Yep. That's all I can say. Yep. Yeah, that that was that was a fun one, wasn't it? Yep. Um, that was a hook right that existed. It, that existed. Of all the hook rats that have ever been out there, this is certainly one of them. Yeah. Uh, and if you uh, if your main question is when did I w uh, remember the mist drag uh, I can turn in halfway uh, up the moon. Oh, well, halfway down the moon, moon, when I sort of began my grind, and I went, mm, "Yeah, that's a play. Uh, that's that. That was progression. Uh, that that was a, uh, that was an objective, and I was right." Yeah, well, it, we kind of were wondering. It's like, okay, when we wondered because Dave did it immediately after Dwarf Castle. Up until that point in time, it had been a pretty linear seed. You had followed each other's pathing and been very, very close. Um, both of you bounced off of that Bygen, for example. So, it, you know, it all kind of, uh, you know, washed out, you know, by the time you got to the Underworld. The difference was after the Dwarf Castle, he, he followed that and then you ended up, you know, continuing into the Underworld and that that made up kind of all the difference. Yeah. Uh, fine. Uh it is just a fitting. I I shouldn't be forgetting that. I, I know enough about this this game that I should not be forgetting that. But it's a thing that everyone does, and does it frequently. And I am no exception. And I think it's one of those things that I think everyone does it in in like practice races, but. When you when it happens in this one, like you don't tend to forget it again after that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying to help you out here, man. Yeah, <laughs> don't help me out. I'll, I'll 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 be kicking myself about it, but I won't be playing too much about um, complaining too much. Scarlet says I can shout at her, but. This is exactly what I expected from a Scarlet Seed, so there's no shouting to be had today. I'm. It was actually a very fun seed to go through, so thank you. And what did you think of that uh, party that, for much of the game, lacked any real coherent way to do damage? We had damage. We had plenty of damage. We had Yarn. He really did a lot of the carrying <laughs> <laughs> early game. He did. He really did. It, yeah, no, I, should, no, I may have, have uh, searched a little harder for a bow, but um, I searched most of the shops and couldn't find one. And, and just finding that heroin rope, uh, that first heroin rope in Cave Magnus was... Stroke of luck. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm not happy to find it. Um, yeah, but two tellers, a Rosa without weapons, and a Pawn without weapons. You have to rely on Young, and that Zeus so called it at the start, uh, as well as the uh, as well as the Poison Claw or and the Strength Give we found set him up perfectly. So yeah, he was damage extraordinaire not something you expect to say eh, in an overworld in the first half of a seed well last question from me we know that uh, that this series is going to come down to game three tomorrow it's uh, one o'clock eastern uh, between alchemy and nitsi uh, to to take it uh, and alchemy looking to take it four time zones are us. Any uh, words of wisdom, words of encouragement, what do you want Alchemy to know? Play the game, have fun. That's exactly what each of our, uh, every runner in our team is focusing on 
for this. We have done it from the very start. Uh, we, we know we're not uh, uh, the best runners out there. We know uh, uh, we are out there to have fun, run uh, run against people in our own 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 races as at our, our own skill levels, as is as set by the league uh, league things, and just play. And that's what we've done every single race so far. It's not going to change. So, Alchemy, have fun. Well, absolutely fantastic. And and once again, GG's to your point, Rick. They get, that first half of the seed was was just... I mean, getting through that by in by itself was, was brutal, but the rest of the seed uh, certainly was a lot of fun watching your go through it but uh ggs to you finishing it up have a good every uh, evening everyone i'll probably see everyone at some point and best of luck the rest of the way boy jack well once again do want to thank our restreamer scala kitty our cracker bangagong and uh, thank you, Vitasia, for uh, a really fun uh, race where NG Dave pulled it out. Uh, we do have races tomorrow. Like we said, Game 3 is on Free Enterprise Network at 1 p.m. Eastern, Alchemy versus Nitsi uh, on, at 8 p.m. Eastern. On Saturday night, we have a twin cast, Noobtree87 versus Starman, and Blues Eclipse versus The Bardic Panda. And at 10 p.m. Eastern, after dark on Saturday night, it's Y2 Sky versus Crispy Slick on Free Enterprise 2. So make sure you join us then. But uh, we right now are going to be uh, sending you to a race going on. It's the twin cast. We've got Garen versus Saradin. We've got Aizen versus Judge Joe all on the same screen with the same seed. We have Blue Wizard and Demarine on comms. Uh, don't spoil what's happened here for the folks who are over there. Uh, but until then, until next time, for all of us here, so long.